Hey guys, Chris Dick here. I'm going to continue on with my virtual machine series and today I thought I would talk about SSH and using config files and the PEM files that we downloaded when we create our virtual machines. Oftentimes uh, cloud providers like Azure, Amazon, GCP, they'll often give you an option to download a PEM file or a key pair file. And this key pair file is something that you want to keep secret, of course, so keep it in a safe place. And it often says download that file. So you put it into a place and most of the time you use it kind of when you need to set up your SSH. Let's say we are in SC, uh, WinSCP right now. And um, what we're going to do today is um, we're going to actually use those files. We're going to create a config file and we're going to use that PEM file that uh, came from, from our uh, virtual machine. So let's get started here. Um, most important is what's a config file? Well, a config file is a text file and I'm going to show you what I have generated right now and it's pretty simple to set up it's, there's nothing really complex um, this is if you want to understand here it's indented by two spaces uh, there's no tabs or anything like that although you, you might be able to use tabs I don't think I've had any problems with that before but let's talk about the structure of the file so first of all this line here uh, host star what that tells uh, the SSH says anything that comes into into this machine as SSH we're going to automatically use the user Ubuntu now this can be uh, problematic but uh, for our purposes we're going to keep it as Ubuntu uh, if you recall sometimes we've created other users for other purposes and uh, but for what we're going to be doing right now we're going to be using Ubuntu now, if you're setting this up for another user on the system, you may even want to consider using that, that user's name there. All right. The other thing is the identity file. Now, the ident identity file is also really important because this file needs to be copied uh, into the user's directory. Okay, the SSH directory, that is specifically. And it is a file that has to be set with specific permissions too. So I'm going to be telling you how to do that, but um, this is the PEM file that we we copied. Now, if you're using uh, PuttyGen or um, if you've, you've used WinSCP to convert the file to a PPK file, um, what we're actually looking for is that original private key file. And if you used uh, even like a SSH keygen that uh, ID RSA uh, with no extension, that's the same file. Okay, so a PEM file is just a, just the same same idea. Uh, we could move that file around and place it into our config directory and it'll know exactly what to do. And essentially you take that file and you pass it around to the rest of the machines in your cluster. Now, when we look at uh, this line here, this is referring to the local host specifically, and essentially it just um, redirects it to uh, the local host IP address. All right, nothing really special about that one. Um, the host of name node, so anytime uh, name node is the host, it will imply that the host name or the host uh, host name, yep, yeah, is uh, is the IP address of in this case 10.0.0.4. Now yours will differ um, depending on what provider you're using. Mine is Azure on this one right now, and it's providing me a subnet as, of 10.0.0.4, and for my data node, is provided a IP address of 10.0.0.5. Okay, so there's not much complicated stuff in this but you can easily type it out and, and write it out um, I will provide a link to a tutorial uh, in the notes here so um, uh, be patient on that one it'll have uh, it'll have everything involved and uh, make sure you have it available to you so let's uh, close up that and what we're going to do here is we are going to very simply copy these files from our local machine over to our remote machine. And it's, it's really as simple as that. Copy and it's there. Okay. Now, nothing has been done on, um, on, on
on the data node one yet. If I go over here, if I click refresh, there's nothing, nothing available. Let's see what happens right now when I try to copy over. Um, and I know there's going to be one error for sure that's going to happen. And I just want you to see what happens so you know what the errors are. So let's, uh, let's do an SSH data node 001. Oops, 001. Okay, and I add that to my fingerprints. And what you're going to see here as well, let's just refresh this. This will create a known hosts file, and that simply uh, simply allows, uh, or just added my uh, RSA key there. And it says permission denied public key. Now, this, uh, this is a bit confusing, but it says bad permissions, okay? And the reason is, and it's not really explanatory here, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to why do I have bad permissions, but what it is, it's, it's the, the permission level that you set here. So I just went to here, I went to right click, properties, and I typed 400 in the octal. What that does is it just makes the owner be able to read the file. Now, the reason is you don't want to be able to write to this file, but you can read to this file. And that pretty much goes for anybody who would be using the file. So we set that and we run this again. Let's see what happens. And there we have it. We are directly into data node one using our PEM file. Okay. Now you're going to see if I say, okay, let's, uh, let's cop, let's go backwards to name node. What happens here? Well, it's probably going to tell me a different type of error, but it looks, as I said, the, the error isn't really very clear because the two errors actually look very similar. It's still permission denied. But the reason here is that the files aren't existing in, uh, on data node one. So let's go back to data node one and all I have to do here is type exit and then it exits out of the data node one and brings me back to name node. Okay, now when we look at, uh, at how to get those files over, this is something I really like to use a command line for. And the, the reason ultimately is that um, it's, it, it gets to be a bit painful when you have to keep copying things over and over and over. So I usually keep a file, a little script like this off to the side someplace. So let me explain what this script does. Um, we're going to do a secure copy using SCP. Okay. And it says we're copying these two files. Okay. You see how I can say there's a group of files and essentially the last thing in the array or a command in the array of commands uh, or parameters, I should say, um, in the SCP uh, command line here is where we're copying these two. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. I'm just going to paste it here. Now what I can do is when I push that over, you'll see that it copied those two files. All right. And if you recall, we're going to do, we're going to go from data node 001. Okay. We can go over there without being asked any questions. And now what I'm going to do is SSH over to name node. So back on. So remember before I couldn't do that because I didn't have those files there. It's quite simple. So exit, exit, and I'm back to my, my beginning again. If I type exit, I'll close my my uh, SSH window or my putty window. And that's about it. So the, 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 the cool thing about this here is that what I did in that command line is it just put the files over here and it automatically created a, a known hosts file. Okay. So pretty neat stuff, right? So I, I as long as I'm creating um, more connections and why not, let's give it a shot. We'll, we'll go for it again. And because I have another file here, uh, let's see, I'm going to go over, actually not another file, but another, uh, another virtual machine. And I'm going to play with this here. This is where everything kind of screws up, right? And we have the same authentication. I created a PPK file. If you're not sure, familiar with how to do that, I have several other videos that show you how to do this. Um, but 
eh, why not? Let's let's be the nice guy today, huh? Let's go here to the PEM file. It's going to ask us to generate a new one, and I just create a new one, just like that. Really super easy. Okay, save that, and I'm going to say this is name node 2, and there we have it. I'm going to log in. Okay, there we have it. And we're going to go over to the home and look in SSH. You can see there's nothing here. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my name node 2. And I'm going to change that, that SCP, uh, SCP command that I did. All right. I'm going to change it to data node 2. All right. So that, it's, it's almost that simple. Let's cross our fingers and see if it works, though. Uh, so let's go. So it's going to ask us, uh, are, do we trust this connection? I say yes. I can move it over. It tells me it's moved over those files and added me to known hosts. If I look over in data node 2 and refresh, I can now do it. So let's, uh, let's look uh, if we can, let's see if we can get into data node 002. Okay. And let's see if we get back. Okay, we'll add that to the node host, of course. Yep, there we have it. We are all SSH'd up in a very short period of time. Okay, guys. So that's it for this uh, little session here. I'm trying to do a several little short sessions on um, on uh, uh, utilities that you will find you'll use a lot in uh, in many of your uh, travels uh, through the virtual machine world. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Remember to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.